here's a, an actual important story. The Daily Wire has this report, and uh, I can't read the whole thing, but it's worth going to uh, dailywire.com to read this. Uh, kind of a follow-up from Luke Rosiak. It says, a Virginia grand jury investigating a public school district's apparent cover-up of the rape of a girl by a male student in a girl's bathroom, which made headlines uh, after a Daily Wire investigation, blasted school officials for their stunning lack of transparency and intentional amnesia in a much-anticipated report released on Monday. In the fact-finding report, the nine-person Loudoun County panel disclosed for the first time that a teacher's aide walked into the bathroom while the ninth grade victim was being raped by her male classmate, saw two pairs of feet under a stall door, but did nothing. The 91-page report called out district officials for a host of lapses, that's one way to put it, that continued long after the initial attack. The report stated, quote, we believe that throughout this ordeal, LCPS administrators were looking out for their own interests instead of the best interests of LCPS. This invariably led to a stunning lack of openness, transparency, and accountability, both to the public and the special ground jury. Grand jury. The report also found that the district concealed the nature of the attack, even as the district was preparing to impose a controversial new transgender bathroom policy. After the rape, the student was transferred to another school where he was involved in multiple incidents of misbehavior against girls that were known to officials, but until now unknown to the public, the report said. Even the rapist's own grandmother told officials that he was a sociopath, but little was done. The rapist soon committed another sexual assault, this time in a classroom. The grand jury report was released to inform the public of its findings based on subpoenaed documents and testimony. Virginia Attorney General Jason uh, Myers noted in a statement that his office had requested the grand jury and that it has not been disbanded, meaning it could bring criminal charges at a later date. Um, the Daily Wire report then goes into the details of the assault that, that happened in the bathroom. This is on May 22nd of 2021. Uh, a male student wearing a skirt anally raped a ninth grade girl in the girl's bathroom. And uh, we, we knew, obviously, about the rape because of the Daily Wire's report, we, we didn't know that, a, stu- that a, a teacher, a faculty member, walked into the bathroom in the middle of it and did nothing. Um, the report reveals that in the days before the bathroom rape, a teacher's assistant wrote to her department chair that the student, quote, this is the rapist, has come into class more than once with his arm around a girl's neck. I've caught him sitting on other girls' laps several times, If this kind of reckless behavior persists, I wouldn't want to be held accountable if somebody should get hurt. So she wrote this note to her department chair, and then a few days later, this person committed a rape in in one of the bathrooms. Um, School officials seem more interested in getting the teacher's aide in trouble than the student. The department chair questioned the true motivation of the author, Uh, The report said the department chair mentioned the uh, email to an assistant principal who questioned whether the author of the email had followed proper protocol. Um, And then it goes on to more details about what exactly happened. Uh, The the, the victim's father shows up to the school after he finds out what happened. And he obviously is, you know, I don't think words could properly describe a father's feeling after finding out that their daughter had been raped. But he was, you know, to put it lightly furious and uh, they're more interested in just like getting him out of there and and and, and he was stonewalled and and uh, then infamously eventually arrested at a, at a school board meeting it says by 3 30 p.m of that same day Loudon's chief operating officer had arrived at the school and sent an email to the superintendent saying quote the incident at SBHS is related to policy 8 uh, 80 40 the policy that would allow transgender males the right to use the girls bathroom now, as I said, you you, you got to go and wa- read the whole report. I mean, it says that w- what what was the consequence for this um, for this? It says on September 9th, twenty twenty one, just two weeks into the school year, uh, the rapist grabbed the shoulder of a girl really hard in class, tried to take her computer, and asked if she posted nudes online. The superintendent, deputy superintendent, and superintendent chief of staff all learned of this incident and knew it was the same individual who committed the sexual assault at SBHS, despite having a 12-page disciplinary file wearing an ankle monitor being closely monitored by the broad-run principal, knowledge of this incident by the highest administrator in LCPS, and a suggestion by the court services unit that a more serious punishment be given, the rapist was simply asked to write the following. I will not touch others. I will not ask for photos to include intimate or provocative. Because this was after he committed the rape. 
was transferred to another school. He's still being aggressive, sexually aggressive with, with female students. This is all known. His history is known. And after another incident, his punishment is writing that note. And that was it. You know, we heard from the left after Luke Rosiak's initial expose that this case had nothing to do with the bathroom policies. They were looking for ways to frantically kind of uh, uh, get around all of this. And one thing that they said is, this has nothing to do with bathroom policies at all. And yet, here we have school officials admitting privately in writing that the two issues are indeed related, because obviously they are. There's a, there's a rape in your, in your school by a male student in the female bathroom, and yet you're still pushing through a policy that would open up the female bathrooms to any boy that wants to walk in. Obviously, it's related. But it's about more than that. This is a systemic failure um, fueled by woke insanity, along with cowardice, incompetence, self-preservation, selfishness, all the factors that allow these kinds of things to happen within institutions. Um, in fact, sex abuse in institutions, whether it's the Catholic Church or Hollywood or the public school system, they always follow the same script. You've got some people lower down the ladder who notice the problem, try to bring attention to it. The teacher's aid in this case. Um, they're stonewalled by the bureaucracy. The problem is covered up. Predators are just like transferred from one place to another. They bounce, bounce around. It's like this game of hot potato between the various uh, you know, institutions because nobody wants to deal with it. And it's always the same story. We have to eventually deal with the fact that this issue in Loudoun is indeed part of a systemic problem, something that is endemic within the public school system. That's the next step here. As some of us have been shouting about for years, you know, there, there is a, there is a system-wide sex abuse epidemic in the public school system. It has been going on for literally decades. The Department of Education itself acknowledged the problem back in 2004, okay, and uh, and nothing has been done about it. So this is this is just, you know, this is tip of the iceberg stuff. And this kind of thing can only happen. In, in an institution that has this sort of systemic problem. Eventually we have to we have to deal with that. And you would think that we as a as a society would be very would be very um, eager to confront the sex abuse problem in this public school system, considering that that 50 million kids are in this system. It's like millions of of us, not me, but millions of, of us, millions of Americans Send our kids in this system every single day. You think if there's evidence, you, th you think if the Department of Education themselves, nearly 20 years ago, acknowledged that there is a massive problem of sex abuse in the school system, sex abuse committed by teachers and sex abuses com committed by students against other students, you think that we would, we would, we would uh, wake up and pay attention. And then you have millions of parents saying, my God, I'm, this is where, you know, my kid is potentially being subjected to this. But instead, we've been uh, looking the other way. And that'll do it for this portion of the show as we move over to the members block. Hope to see you there. If not, talk to you tomorrow. Godspeed.